Welcome to the WYHS Journal, Public Affairs from 104.9. I'm Paul Kretschmer. On today's broadcast, you'll hear remarks from Senator Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut regarding continued support for Israel at a time when that nation has been attacked by the terrorist group Hamas. This news conference was held outdoors. We're going to give Israel whatever it needs to win this war. And it begins with an additional package of funding that I hope will not only help Israel, but send a message that we are going to be at Israel's side. We will have their back for the long haul. And whatever we can do, either directly or through our friends and partners, countries like Qatar and Egypt, to rescue American hostages, we will do. I'll be going back to Washington. I've been at various briefings. You know that there are Americans among the hostages probably more than 20, and we also know that more than 14 Americans have been killed. But let's be very clear and blunt. This act of terrorism cannot go unpunished. The Hamas terrorists must be held accountable, and we will provide the additional funding that's necessary. I'm putting together a package called a supplemental that will be submitted probably next week. I've talked to the administration about it. I've been in touch with both the Department of Defense and Department of State. The president is beginning this effort as well. And I am very hopeful that we will have billions of dollars more probably more than $3 billion to provide the interceptors for the Iron Dome, the precision munitions for Israeli aircraft, the additional shells and rounds that are necessary for artillery, and anything that Israel needs. Because this war against the Hamas terrorists is not a war against the Palestinian people. It's a war against the Hamas terrorists must be won. And there is going to be strong support throughout the world. Going to be negotiations with Hamas to get our Americans back? Um, We have been in touch diplomatically with some of our friends and partners, like Egypt and Qatar, to explore whatever channels there may be to get our hostages back. But I'm not at liberty to talk about the precise talks that may be underway. The bottom line here is that support for Israel is absolutely critical right now. And we need to provide whatever Israel needs. And that's the reason that I'll be submitting and supporting an additional package of funding that we are putting together, I would stress, on a bipartisan basis. Support for Israel is bipartisan. It's above all. And the effort to get back our hostages will also be bipartisan. Did you say that the um, the Israel money will be packaged in with money for Ukraine too, or, or what is the status of that? Right now, we are looking at a separate supplemental for Israel. There may be an effort to combine it with Ukraine down the road in a separate and another supplemental. We're not sure about the precise timing of the supplemental for Ukraine, but we're going to push it as well because Ukraine needs to continue its fight so that it wins against Russia. Okay, so for the, in the short term it will be a standalone for Israel, for lack of a better term? We're expecting at the moment that there will be a standalone for Israel, but there may well be a combination uh, down the road. We're not sure exactly what the level of support is. But, you know, there is bipartisan support for additional funding for both Ukraine and Israel. If those two additional aid packages were put on the floor of the House of Representatives and the Senate, they would pass overwhelmingly. And what we need is a vote on both. And you said, go ahead, sorry. But for now, what we're putting together is a supplemental package for Israel. And you said billions, is there a more precise number, 2.9 billion, 2.7 billion? Well, the, the ongoing aid this year is 3.8 billion. 
and I would expect that the additional aid package would be in that range. You surprised me. But, but here is, just keep in mind, 3.8 billion is what we have been providing under the Memorandum of Understanding that we have with Israel. So though those arms are flowing right now. The interceptors for the Iron Dome, the precision munitions for its aircraft, the artillery shells are going to Israel right now in real time. But we need to replenish the stocks of those weapons platforms so that Israel has the munitions and additional arms that it needs as this fight continues, and it will be a long one. This is going to be a marathon, not a sprint. One of the shipments already arrived, I believe, to, uh, this morning to Israel. Is that part of this whole bill also? Well, the supplemental, the additional aid package, will be to replenish the stocks so we can continue to provide supplies. The, the stock of arms may well be exhausted in the first weeks or months of this conflict. And we want to make sure that Israel is there for the long haul. Let me emphasize one more point. As you may know, there is a hold by Senator Tuberville on confirmation of key Pentagon positions. Nine of those top military commands are in what is called CENTCOM, the Central Command. Nine top military positions in the Central Command are vacant because of these holds. That is unconscionable. It conflicts with our national security. And it is a pressing, absolutely critical reason to change the Senate rules. We need to reform the rules so that no single senator can put a hold on nominations that are critical to our national security as these. So we have our own work to do in the Senate. But I just want to emphasize, the President yesterday gave probably the strongest speech in support of Israel I've heard in my lifetime from any president. And I talked to a senior Israeli diplomat yesterday who said to me, I've never heard a president talk like that. The United States is strongly united behind Israel. I've been to rallies, four of them now, across the state of Connecticut. And every one of them involves people not only of the Jewish faith, but different races, religions, America and the world, I hope will stay strong and united behind Israel. And that will include the billions of dollars that are necessary for Israel to defend itself and to stop Hamas terrorism. Were you surprised in the lapse of intelligence by the Israelis when this happened? There's no question that there was a massive intelligence failure. And Israel and the United States need to know what caused it, how it happened, and what can be done to remedy it. So, uh, frankly, I was shocked and surprised by this massive intelligence failure. And we need to know why it occurred, because it affects us as well as the Israelis. We have a military-to-military -military relationship with Israel that is as close as any that we have with any nation in the world. And Israel is one of our most trusted and reliable allies, probably the most important ally that we have in that part of the world. And uh, that will continue. That unbreakable bond will continue. Do you think the Senate Armed Services Committee, which you sit on, will, will look into this? Will look into this intelligence failure? Because, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the United States didn't have any warning either. Uh, so far as we know now, there was no warning to the United States or to Israel. And we need to know whether it's through the Armed Services Committee or the Intelligence Committee of the United States Senate, what went wrong. Senator Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut in support of Israel. Audio courtesy of CTN. For further information, call us at 860-346-1049. The opinions expressed are those of the participants, not necessarily those of the staff or management of the station. I'm Paul Kretschmer for the WIHS Journal, Public Affairs from 104.9 WIHS.